difficult to introduce Mkuseli or Kusta, as his friends call him, uh, Jack, as he's such a multi-layered person. He's a leader with a rich anti-apartheid activist history, known particularly for his involvement in the consumer boycott campaign of the 80s. This week, he gained another hat, that of an author, when he launched his book, To Survive and to succeed from a farm boy to a businessman he's here with us today and uh, we're talking to him as the individual and the leader welcome to the agenda thank you, thank you so much for making the time born on the farms of human stop um, on the banks of the Hamtuos yeah. river is that how you say it you pronounce it right um, I never pronounce it that way myself the sixth it. of eight children yeah how did uh, Kusta come to be who he is today? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I'm just, uh, I think that sometimes it was uh, by default that I, I became. Yeah. I wasn't, my mother was married, they had uh, six children from a marriage and their husband died. And then seemingly he had some uh, kind of uh, uh, arrangement with another man and then I came through that. And I think my younger brother the same. <laughs> we look at you and uh, how you've developed. Some people get stuck only in politics. You have transcended to go into business and now into the area of literature. What drives you? Yes, look, I mean, initially the struggle, I got it in it by default, I suspect. Because basically, I, don't, I doubt it. If I have come from the farms and things were smooth as it is today, maybe I would have never thought about politics. Yeah. Uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, the South African uh, landscape at the time was such that you could not escape the trappings of the draconian laws of the time, uh, I find myself involved by default. For example, for me, the major thing that uh, traumatized me was our removal forced removal when yeah. we put it out of the land that I thought would belong to us. And that made, made a mark on you? It did. Yeah. I mean, it stayed with me right through and unfortunately up to this day, the fact that we were moved from our land. And I remember that at the time, I thought we had everything. This was our paradise. And then, of course, to be restricted by the past laws every step of the way, let alone the fact that we were homeless and... Uh, being moving from farm to farm until we found a good Samaritan white farmer whose uh, kindness was as so powerful, even powerful than the crudeness and the rudeness of the farmer that rooted, uprooted us of our land. Yeah. At what point in your life did Nkuseli think, um, I want to be organized? Um, when were you introduced to organized activism no, against No, what happened? I was kicked out of the classroom after I was accepted on the basis of uh, the, 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 on the basis of the results that I have. And then I come to the school because I did not have the past laws that was a correct. And from that moment, I was thrown into a moaning, complaining, disgruntled, yeah. and angry young person. <laughs> And from there onward, and then of course, as the struggle developed with the 1976 uprising, then I, I, I follow suit, I got in. Yeah. I got in in every step that was resisting the government because that was the only thing I could do. You formed the Youth Congress of the UDF. Um, the rich history of, of this movement is usually sidelined when we talk about the fight against apartheid. Just for the benefit of especially our younger viewers, Take us back to those days. Remind our younger people what the UDF was all about. Yeah, look, from 1976, the students were driven by the Black Consciousness Movement. It was not an organization at the time. It was just ideas that were flowing around, yes. which were strong, mm -hmm. restoring the dignity and the confidence of young Vico's people. Yeah. And, them. and then later on, with the uprisings of 1976, people started now to form the proper organizations. And I was involved in those organizations right through from that time, either as a junior or a very effect, uh, uh, participating up until we formed the COSAS in 1979, and then later on the youth congresses that were formed. The youth congresses uh, graduated into 
formed, uh, were part of the formation of the United Democratic Front. And the, Uma the United Democratic Front, what it did, it touched each and every person in the country for the first time in the history of this land yeah. that everybody participated and understood what was happening in South Africa. So it played a role in mass mobilization and conscientization of our people. But it also had inclusivity, which is something that the South Africa of today is, is grappling with. Well, <laughs> yeah, UDF How says... How did you manage that? No, you will see in the book I explained when we went to Cape Town uh, to launch the UDF, yeah. I saw people from all shapes and uh, from all races, from all different religion. I've never met a Muslim at that time, Islam, yeah. people who believe in Islam and so on. And you could see a bigger picture now, but all these people were brought in by one thing, their uh, 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 the rejection of the Quran of Bills, as we told them, or the new dispensation, yeah. and yeah. also being anti-apartheid, and they rejected Quran apartheid. of, that's a name that has <laughs> I know the people in a long time. The Quran of yeah. views and so on and so on. So the United Democratic Front united everyone. And South Africans, for the first time during that period, became a nation. And we became a, a, a country that is got a mission to unite our country and have one state, non-racial, non-sexist, and democratic. What are your thoughts about the new dawn? Not just Cyril Ramaphosa's new dawn. Going back to 1991, the changes of the year 1994, are you, are you happy? Are these, uh, the, the way South Africa has turned out, are these the things that you fought for? I was happy up to a certain point with a little bit of unhappiness more here and there up to 2007. But after 2007, I became entirely unhappy. And actually to the point that if you like, I got, as they call it, I got I became disgruntled. I was angry, rogue. No, no, no. I was just, I was just angry, <laughs> because the reason for that was because I knew that we were going to land into trouble where we are in now. What were the specifics that you were unhappy about? No, it's because I foresaw that South Africa was moving in the wrong direction. Today, South Africans are racist. I'm talking about black South Africans. They don't know it. They don't want to be told that. But their utterances are racist, and are moving towards being tribalistic and they are bringing ethnicity, and all the things that the struggle was totally opposed to. And as a result of The Freedom that, Charter was against it. The what? The Freedom Charter was against it's it. It's still there. They yeah. all swear by the Freedom Charter. They all swear by Nelson Mandela, by the ANC. The ANC, the reason the ANC was recognized, what made it unique in the world of all the organizations, yeah. it was this non-racial approach to the South African problem. And the world admired us for that. But today, believe me, if we don't change, if we don't change our steps, the world what is going to speak in our that faces. What need to be changed? We need to create a united South Africa where all the people are going to enjoy the opportunities of the land. We create hope for young people. We make sure that our people have a, a loyalty to the nation loyalty to the flag of the country, the national anthem, we respect our institutions, we, we are protected by the, by, the, by the state and everybody. If that happened, we are we okay. We, we time tied. What do you want people to uh, learn from this book? It's a motivation that tells my story, but at the same time, telling, giving a lot about facts about the South African revolution, just the polemics of the 70s, of the independent trade union versus registered trade unions, what they meant when they say these people were sell out and so on and so on. And the book is available in all sh uh, shops in South Africa and the online. And um, it's good for young people. For example, I failed or I repeated four years of schooling. I started school at the age of 10. I spent 10 years before I went to university. I was expelled in two schools. I was stopped and blocked every step of the way. But one thing, I was determined. No yeah. torture, no detention, no threat of death could stop me in believing in what is right. If our people can stick to that and know what is right is right, no matter who, you, even if I don't like you, if you are saying the right thing, I need to adhere to it. Mkusili Jack, as we wrap it up, just a quick one. Your thoughts on current affairs, the state capture inquiry. Just yesterday, the president approved the law uh, for a minimum wage. What are your thoughts of, on the South Africa of now? We look like we are on the right track at the moment. 
We need just to stand together uh, on the basis that we are going to, we know what is right is comes to everybody naturally. When you do something wrong, you are acting unnatural, you know. If we do that, I can tell you we can r roll back the country to where it needs to be. And I'm confident now that our people have risen with all the campaigns that have taken place so far. They have raised the consciousness of our people and told the people that it is none but ourselves yep. that can take us to How the next level. How was the book level. received at the launch on Thursday? Well, I mean, uh, look, we haven't had any place where we have less than 400 people coming and buying the book and so on. So you're sitting pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming through to talk to us. Mkusta, Kusta Jack, uh, and that's his book, To Survive and Succeed from a Farm Boy to a Businessman. Thanks for coming through. Thank you very Let's much. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Yeah.